We are trapped within the darkest holes of our mind. We can't wait to be free. My name is Jason Beckett. I'm a 17-year-old senior and the only child of Julie and Ryan Beckett. My family is an on-the-road kind of family due to constant job openings given to my father. My father became a pharmacist at the local CVS. Mom just stays at home while my dad is away. Due to my family constantly moving I never really made friends nor do I plan on making any. It's not like I ever needed any friends. We moved to 15 Wyndham Avenue in an aqua blue house in Mandan, North Dakota. It's not much like the other houses with their fancy lawns and house decorations. I could care less what anyone thinks about us. If we are poor, rich, middle class, we all leave anyway. When I was a child I got into a huge fight with three teenagers who, to what I thought, were trying to kill me. I don't know why they wanted me dead. Maybe it's because they were in a gang. It was in the middle of the street and the fight was more of me protecting myself after being threatened by them and sworn at. I was shoved backwards and I began to lose my balance. I fell and landed head first onto the sidewalk pavement. As I lay there bleeding from my skull, everything began to fade. I noticed the three teenagers rush over to me and as I did I saw someone behind them, then I blacked out. When mom and dad found me on the floor bleeding out I was rushed to the emergency room where I was given a full body CAT scan. I asked mom what happened to those kids who attacked me, she told me that I was too young to hear, but something unfortunate had happened to them. After the CAT scan was complete, doctors noticed something peculiar and irregular happening in my brain. They said something about my limbic system the area involving my emotions. I was asked if I hate those boys who attacked me with which I calmly replied with no. What's hate? If it's something bad then no. I don't hate them for what they did to me. They concluded that I had a rare, maybe new, form of psychopathic personality disorder that didn't allow me to hate anyone or anything. They were fairly surprised as they didn't know what this meant or what it was causing this sense. It's weird that it would target one specific emotion. They told my parents that they shouldn't be afraid because it only targeted hate, which could be considered a really good thing. It was just a feeling that will never be introduced to me because of this unknown problem. But I do know that because of this same benefit for my problem, not being able to hate others and stay cool-headed, there was also a drawback. Every night I have reoccurring dreams. It's a dark, almost empty pitch black world that I am thrown into. It always feels like I have never been here although I always have these dreams every night. There is someone, standing in the darkness, and moving. I could tell there is someone there in this pitch black abyss because although everything is dark, that person was always darker. Not even the textbook definition can fully explain how this being can even be seen. As if there is no light able to reach this mysterious person but through my presence he is as visible as a sunflower in the middle of a rose field. In these dreams it would always just stand there in this abyss. Silent and still. It's always in my dreams. Well I say dreams because nothing bad ever really happens. Regardless. It's an ominous vision. Pops enrolled me into Mandan High School. I'm a senior so there really isn't much going for my senior graduation as I share no special bond with these strangers. I usually keep to myself. I got dressed in my jean pants, red plaid shirt, and beanie hat. I grabbed my bag which only had one drawing notebook, five lead pencils, since I like to draw in my spare time, three notebooks, and a textbook involving the human mind that I stole from my dad. My dad has a fascination for my psychological problem but it doesn't bother me. I waited at my bus stop and boarded the bus. I was the new kid in town so naturally everyone just stared at me for the couple seconds I got on the bus and sat down. Then they returned back to their daily activities. They were gossiping, texting, talking, and reading like most teens do. I got to school, received my schedule from my school counselor and headed to my first period class. 
psychology class. Who would have guessed I was put in there? The teacher handed out those written on and worn out textbooks but I refused when one was handed to me. I had my father's textbook and viewed it more advanced and efficient than the ones offered by this school. Infinity of the Human Mind was the name of my, well his textbook. It gave a lot of information regarding human emotions, knowledge, brain growth, human reactions. But, as the class started I had the urge to just take out my drawing notebook and a lead pencil. I began to draw, but I didn't know what I was drawing. I, I just drew instinctively. As I drew, I grew tired and began to yawn. I was slowly starting to fall asleep and then knocked out unconsciously on top of my drawing. Notebook 25 minutes into class. I was having the dream again. I was in the same dark place with only me and that person standing there. I always wondered if it had a face. But every time I got closer, it got farther. As if he, she, or it didn't want me close. But this one was different. This manifestation of utter darkness did not move when I got closer. I slowly walked towards it and when I got to as close as skin contact, I woke up. It was five minutes before class ended and I was drooling on my notebook. It was closed shut and my lead pencil was no longer in my hand, but placed on top of my notebook. The lead pencil looked worn out as the eraser was completely gone and the tip seemed burnt from use. I shook the lead pencil and I heard nothing. Nothing at all. All the lead was gone. Maybe someone stole all the lead. I didn't know or care. I could always just get more. Everyone around me was just socializing her listening to music and here I am. Sleepy and confused. I wonder what I was drawing before I slept. Maybe I finished it. I grabbed my notebook and flipped through the pages to notice that all the pages I've been flipping through so far have been empty. I was sure that when I began to draw, it was on the very first page. I would never start anywhere but the first page of a new notebook. Once I reached the last page I dropped my notebook. My eyes widened from a sleepy gaze to that of a frightened child. It was that person, in that empty world, but there was a white spot in the middle of where his face would be. Almost as if his, her, or its face was beginning to emerge from the shadows. The bell rang and psychology class was over. I quickly snapped out of it and slammed the notebook shut and continued to my next class. The image still burned into my psyche and pulsating strangely as if it's something I miss, want, need, but I can't have. The school day was over and I no longer felt drowsy and sleepy. I headed home and that was that. Nothing else happened. I told my parents, when I arrived home, what had happened to me at school and what I saw. My mom told me that it was probably just my imagination getting the best of me. My father, on the other hand, thought differently. He had me re-explain in detail what I had seen and he took notes. Shortly after the extensive questioning he walked towards the phone and dialed a number. I can't clearly remember what he had been saying. I think it might, again, limbic system, the three kids, today. I didn't stick around and just headed to my room since it was already 10 p.m. By the time he finished his constant questioning, as I headed to bed I questioned if I would really have that dream again after that whole ordeal at school. I always have these dreams as if they were a daily routine. Well they are, to me. So I just decided to shut my eyes and fall asleep. Strangely enough, I didn't have that dream again like every other night. Instead, I woke up, having no dream or consciousness of what I dreamed about. It was as if I closed my eyes and then opened them to the dawn of tomorrow. To be honest, I was relieved strangely. I felt like my life was going to take a turn for the better and things would finally change. Two months had passed since what happened in psychology class and I still don't have any dreams that relate to that event or in general. I've already read my dad's book five times and learned a lot from it. One part in particular always caught my attention. The physiology of emotion is closely linked to arousal of the nervous system with various states and strengths of arousal relating, apparently, to particular emotions.
although those acting primarily on emotion may seem as if they are not thinking. Cognition is an important aspect of emotion, particularly the interpretation of events. Quote, emotions are aroused in relations to certain events. Interesting. Regardless, I waited at my bus stop as usual. The same sunny yellow bus came driving by and stopped to pick me up. I boarded the bus and sat down. Unfortunately next to Zach. Zach is the senior jock who has a tendency of overshowing his dominance on others. I was no exception. He immediately told me to screw off and sit somewhere else. But there was nowhere else to go and in no condition am I getting off. I told him to deal with it and stop being such a meathead. Quote, he glared me down as if he has every motive to forcefully kick me off the bus. He shoved me off the seat. I immediately got up to plant myself back on the seat. He shoved me off again and cursed my name for the entire bus to hear. All eyes were on me. I didn't know what to do or say. Suddenly, something rushed into me. Something. Weird. Evil. Angry. I rushed off of the bus floor and punched Zack straight in the face. Seeming as if I had broken his nose. The impact was so strong that his head whiplashed on the glass of the bus window causing a crack. To emerge, Zack's dirty blonde hair and red sports jacket plummeting onto the leather green seat. He was unconscious. I didn't know what I had done. But I felt glad that I did it. I turned to see everyone staring at me and then I froze. I was completely petrified and in total shock from who I saw standing amongst the crowd. This thing was standing right by the bus driver before the driver got up to rush to Zack and me. It seemed like more of its face was manifesting from what has happened. The skin was pale white and only appeared on one quarter of where its face should be. One black empty hole was where its eye should be and in the center of this hole. A crimson red dot just faintly glowing. Before I could even scream I was pushed and pinned down by the bus driver. I was never the same after what happened that day. Just when I thought things would be different, I slipped out of consciousness. And into its world. I'm no longer referring it as my dream world. But a dark world where it inhabits it and forever haunts me mentally and now in reality. It stood there again. In this abyss. It's faintly glowing eye pinned straight on me. I don't know what it wanted but I was angry for the fact that I had no control over anything. It was that entire thing's fault. All of it. Every last ounce of what caused this or what has happened to me in my life. All the bad things. It's fault. As I kept rummaging through all of these events being blamed towards it. A skin-like mask began growing on its face. A second I emerged from that being. Both eyes are now fixated onto me and it began to slowly move towards me. It was striding from left to right as if it has no sense of direction and as it headed towards me. Its head twisted and shook violently every step it took. All I knew was that I didn't want it near me. But no matter what I did, my feet were planted firmly into the darkness. I couldn't scream or raise my voice high enough for anyone to hear. Just a small shrewd whisper calling out for help as if it was all that my body could allow. It was now in arm's length of my face. It leaned over and directed its eyes straight at mine's. And then there was a blood-curdling scream. I woke up. I was in a hospital bed covered in snow-white sheets and thin wires strapped onto my head. My head was hurting and throbbing a lot. I was in a solitary room surrounded by one-way glass windows. I can't see what was happening outside, but whoever was behind those windows could see me. I felt like a hamster in its cage. Was I being observed and experimented on while I was unconscious? How long have I been unconscious? My head hurts. What have they done to me? All these thoughts made me angry. Just, angry. Two doctors and three guards entered through a nearly camouflaged glass door. I asked them who they are and what they wanted. They ignored me. Instead, those three guards pinned me down onto the hospital bed while one of the doctors came towards me. With a syringe. Are they trying to sedate me? Why are they doing this to me? I was scared. Then this same strange feeling rushed into me again and in that very same rush, 
I saw the reflections of it on all of the one-way glass windows, standing there and mocking me. They all were mocking me and they all had those same faintly glowing crimson dot eyes. I broke free from the three men and lunged for the syringe the doctor was grasping. Before he could even react I snatched it from his hand and pierced the needle into his neck close to his jugular. He landed on the floor with a loud thud and the three guards and other doctor froze in their tracks. What are they looking at? What did I just do? Blood began to seep out of the punctured neck wound of the collapsed doctor. Did I do that? My hands began to shake and I began to chuckle. I couldn't have. It was its fault. I moved and faced the one-way window to see my reflection only to be greeted by those same faintly glowing crimson eyes. I was rushed with this same strange and foreign feeling again and I quickly struck the wall with my fist, just punching and punching in hopes of it going away. Cracks appeared but no matter what I did, its eyes were always fixated on me. I stopped the assault on the window as I heard the opening of the glass door and a rush of footsteps quickly following. The color in my vision turned into a darker hue. The white tiled floor my feet were planted on was now dark and gray and the same casual hospital bed and its white fabric sheets were tainted with the very same darkness. My reality was now its reality and as I slowly turned my head, everyone became it in my eyes. The only thing that was slightly normal was me and my reflection except I began to turn into that shadow. The same white pale skin began to emerge on my face and I grew those same horrendous, ominous red eyes. I refaced everyone who entered the room who now took the form of the very being that had haunted me ever since I was young. I walked toward them and as I did I heard the noise of tranquilizers being fired. I slowly began to fall asleep but I kept pacing towards them till I was in arm's reach of one of them. I reached out with my arm and clutched one of their shirts. I hate you. Quote. 